Just take a few minutes, a few seconds here just to worship God right where you are and just <clears throat> open up your mouth and bring him into your situation and give him permission to stay, <laughs> to stay. How many times have we entered into his presence or asked him to show up only to move out of the place where he comes? Stay here, stay here, don't ever leave us, can y'all say stay here, stay here, stay here, stay here, Sounds like don't ever leave us. Father, we thank you for your presence. Stay here. Rest in this place. Don't ever leave us. God, so many times we ask for so many other things. And what we needed was you. Because once we connect with you, we have everything that we need. So God, teach us how to honor your presence. Teach us how to acknowledge your presence. Teach us, God, how to enjoy your presence. For in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God, we acknowledge you today. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We say again, stay. Even as we open the word, God, stay. stay. Even as we go through this day, stay. stay. Yes, Lord. When we face our test, trials, tribulations, God, in the good, the bad, and the ugly, God, we invite you to stay. God, we give you permission to stay. And we ask you, please, don't ever leave us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this place, this place and time. Now we give you permission to stay. As we go into the word, God, we ask that you will guide our tongue. Give us the words of the learned. Give us wisdom, God, to speak only what you would have us to speak, to say what needs to be said. And nothing more, nothing less, because we want you to stay. God, if your spirit lifts off of us, even as we're speaking, God, give us the wisdom to take our seat. God, we honor you in this place. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for healing. We thank you for breakthroughs. God, we thank you that you're even touching bodies as we are speaking, causing things to come into alignment, God. Every organ, every tissue, every cell. We bind sickness and disease, even now. God, we come against confusion. God, we come against generational curses, even now. In the name of Jesus, stay, 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 stay. God, now we break down the walls of the enemy. Even those that we built ourselves, God. We give you permission to tear them down now. Stay here. Holy Spirit, you're welcome even the more. We bless you, God. We give you praise in the master's name of Jesus. We do pray. Let everyone say amen and amen. Give God a hand praise if you will. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, I want you to stay. Come on, come on. Give God a hand praise. Amen. If you need him right now, just say stay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is truly a blessing. You know, when I see uh, people are intentional about their relationship with God, you may be sleep, seated for the moment. Amen. I want to say a few things before I go into the word. I, I'm not going to keep you all long. <clears throat> I do want to say happy Mother's Day again. I want to echo what has already been said to the mothers. Amen. Um, I'm going to talk about motherhood today. 
uh, kind of shifting from where we've been. Uh, the Lord has put something on my heart to share. Bring my Kleenex on. Amen. Put something on my heart to share. Shifted our message for this particular day. Um, I normally don't do messages, but this year God has done something different with us. And I think he's maturing us for mature people. You're, if you can't mature the people, the leader does not mature. And so as God is, as we're listening to what the Lord says, he's given us something different. Amen. And we're grateful for that. Amen. But we're again, happy Mother's Day to all mothers. We honor you today. Amen. <clears throat> Those that are still yet learning to be a mother. You, you, you're in motherhood. You uh, brought forth a child and you're yet learning what a mother is. We do honor you today. Uh, thank God for those that are online, the family that I've seen online. My wife has already called out many names, but we thank God for our virtual family. I intentionally, for some reason, started putting my live on as I'm ministering so I can see their names because I want to let the people know that they can't be here. Uh, some are out of state, some are different places, and they still tune in, they still sow, they still give, everything, just like if they were here. That's why I have no, um, I don't know what the word I want to use. I'm not... I'm not easy with the people that live right in the city and uh, say they will come, but they won't. They be everywhere else, but they don't show up at church. We do honor everyone, but you should take that extra effort to assemble yourselves. Amen. Amen. I know y'all won't say amen to that, but that's all right. Amen. But again, I thank God for my wife, uh, uh, for all she is and all that she does. Amen. My best friend, the mother of my three children, my only children. Amen. I thank God for her, her dedication to the Lord. Amen. I noticed this week, <clears throat> this is a tough month for us, uh, not just because it's, it's Mother's Day. We remember our mothers. I heard Pastor Laura giving honor to the, her mother in love, which is my mom and uh, her spiritual mom. This, 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 this is a time to celebrate. You know, sometimes people get sad. You, you still cry. When you see somebody cry, that don't mean that they're sad. Right. They remember the good days. And I, I noticed my wife shifting the other day. Her, we was having a high time, and I saw her. She gazed off a couple of times. I said, well, we got it. And I said, God, what can I give her to let her know that she's appreciated? And he said, the gift of time. The gift of time. And I said, what do you mean? He said, change your schedule to ensure that she knows you're there. We both crying and carrying on about our moms, but he said she needs to know that you're there. And so we finished Thursday. I think our Thursday workout it was. And uh, we wanted to do some things. And I think since Thursday evening, I've been giving her the gift of time. And I've just been with her intentionally, showing her that I appreciate who she is. And so, baby, before, before everyone, those that are even watching, I appreciate you. I love you. I thank God for you. You show up today again, girl. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted her to dress up real good. I told her, even the other night, I asked her, let's go out to dinner. And she didn't know where we was going. I was just out of spur of the moment. I said, let's go do something. I said, let's go to Applebee's. And she said, okay. And her okay wasn't like that okay. Like, oh, you know, I, I'll go with you because we together. She, that, was, that was that okay was like. Then I said, I know what she really want because she said it about three weeks ago. I said, you want to go to that place? I wanted her to say the name. I couldn't think of the name of it. And I said, that, that place, that Asian place. And she said, Makata? I said, yeah, that's the one. And we went there and had some fun. And I thank God for it, amen. Give God a hand, praise for time, the gift of time. Because, you know, uh, materialistically, I've given my wife more than some people would ever have in life. I promised her that. When we didn't have anything, I said, if you stay with me, there's going to come a time you're not going to want anything. Now, I didn't know God was going to bless me like he did, but I believed that he would. And that's a, that's a testament to anyone that's believing God for something great. You got something out there you believe in God for. Stay focused on it. Put it, be intentional about it. Keep it ever before you. It will come to pass. Because people look at us and say, well, they this and that. Man, we start, we both from the projects. And now we live a life that we dreamed about, we talked about. And I'm going to tell you, everyone here to keep dreaming, keep talking about it. But don't just talk about it. Be about it. Every time I think about 
uh, Evangelist Donna over there, amen, things that she's doing. We always talk about certain things that she's doing. And I just tell her, be diligent about it. Don't, when it's, it don't go the way you want, stay diligent about it. And so we've done all those things materialistically. And my wife told me some years ago, she said, yeah, if I got all this in there and we ain't right, she said, I don't need it. I don't want God to take it. She said, but this don't mean nothing if we're not right. And so that causes you to think about the gift of time. So anything that you want to do to get better in, you got to put some time into it. Amen. And as much as I, I, I miss, I know I, my mother has been gone a long time, her mother before my mom. But you never forget those days that those things they imparted in us. And I say, my mom taught me how to love a woman. She didn't teach me how to be a man. She taught me how to love a woman. Amen. She taught me how to treat a woman. And I am that I am today as a husband treating my wife the way that I do from what I learned from my mother. Amen. I, I learned how to take care of my family through my dad. Because we wasn't going to go without anything. But my mom taught me how to love. Amen. If you will, grab your Bibles. I'm going to be before you not long. I'm going to read about two different scriptures and give you some definitions. And I want you to take a look at this thing we are celebrating today. I believe this should change not just Mother's Day, but also motherhood. Everybody say motherhood. Because a lot of people give birth to a child. And by definition, that makes them a mother. But your motherhood, motherhood is a learned thing. It's something they learn. Amen. And it's going to be a familiar passage of scripture. Amen. We're going to Luke. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to deal particularly with uh, the New Living Translation today. Amen. Luke, the first chapter uh, that we read all the time when we talk about our Lord and Savior, uh, Luke 1 and 26. Let's stand in for the reading of the word. Amen. And then we're going to go straight into what we're going to talk about today. Amen. Hallelujah. Stay here. I'm ready to go home now. Stay here. Luke. Thank you, Jesus. The first chapter, verse number 26 in the New Living Translation. And the word of God reads, it's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged. The King James Version say, espoused. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Joseph really already aware of his lineage and know he's supposed to be married to a virgin. I'm setting this up as we go. Amen. To King David, Gabriel appeared unto her and said, Greetings, a favorite woman. Greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. Somebody think this is a Christmas message. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34, here it go. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born, to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. Amen. I want to talk about, amen, this morning, the favor and the assignment of motherhood, the favor and the assignment of motherhood. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell your neighbor there's favor that come with motherhood. See, tell somebody else that for they didn't get it. Say there's favor that comes with motherhood. Favor that comes with motherhood. <clears throat> As I set this up, and, and I, like I said, I don't want to be long today. I want you to understand where we are. And hey, you all can st start the time back there so I can stay on track. Amen. Because y'all know I start talking and be going. Amen. Um, here we are. God sent an angel, sent Gabriel to Nazareth to, to, to Virgin Mary. I, don't, I want you all to picture this in where we are now. Uh, Joseph knowing that he's of the lineage of David and knowing that for the lineage to keep to go on, amen, his first wife, his first wife, amen, because back then they had many wives, amen, his first wife, amen, uh, the one that would bring forth his firstborn, had to come through a virgin. It had to come through one that had never knew a man. 
And so uh, when the scripture, the scripture sets it up, and here he comes, and the scripture says she was engaged. When we read in the King James Version, a lot of us get confused and say that when they're in the spouse, they think that they're already married, but she was engaged. Number one, here's the first indicator. She's engaged to him. And you know when they had marriages back then, had weddings, weddings last for several days. It lasts for several days. So they have an engagement. It goes to a set period of time. First of all, marriages were set. They had set marriages. They picked who you your family picked for you who you were going to marry. Now think about it, if you pick somebody that you don't like, you know. You want him tall and, and, and muscular, but he be short and, and round. You know, I don't want him, but you didn't get to choose. So first of all, she's, she's espoused or engaged to someone that she didn't choose. They chose her for him. And then she set aside for to carry, amen, on the lineage of David. She know who she's connecting to. She know what bloodline that she's been married into. And so she's engaged to him. She's yet a virgin. And all of a sudden she's visited by an angel. Y'all stay with me now because this is going to mess y'all up. Amen. And the angel speaks to her and tell her that she's getting ready to bring forth a child. First thing alert, first alert, Mary said, I can't do this because I'm a virgin. The thing, first of all, the angel did not consult with Joseph before he told Mary about it. Now, she's engaged to this guy. She's set up. She's supposed to be clean. <laughs> she supposedly never knew a man. And now she's engaged. And weeks before, amen, their marriage, she has to go to the man she's engaged to while she's a virgin and says, I'm with child. <laughs> now, imagine this, brothers. You're in a set-up marriage. She's supposed to be clean. I'm going to quit saying clean. Whatever they used to call it back in the day. She's supposed to be untouched. And you've been preparing for her. You've been putting the gifts and everything aside that you're going to present to your new wife. And she comes to you weeks before the actual ceremony and says that I am with child. Now, I don't know many brothers, many men today that will say, okay, well, that's all right. That's cool. You know. Imagine not being consulted by God that your virgin wife is already pregnant. And I, I can imagine Joseph, I was going to say that, but I can imagine Joseph saying, you know, God could have told me something. You know, we, we, you know, we cool like that. It, he could have said, he could have let me know this. Is, but Joseph, amen, what wisdom, had enough wisdom to understand that, amen, Mary, amen, was prepared for, for him from birth, from her birth. So she was kept. She was guarded. And all of a sudden, before they are to be married, she comes and says she's with child. When the angel identifies her, he calls her favorite woman. This word favored, amen, does not mean just simply mean, amen, there's something good about you. This favored woman means that you were chosen among all women. God picked you for this assignment. And so the, 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 one of my first points I want to make about motherhood, motherhood, sometimes you don't choose to be a mother. God chooses you for motherhood. Now I can hear some of y'all thinking real loud. You're thinking real loud, saying, but I didn't want this, amen, but you didn't, you didn't have the option. God chose you. I only want one God, but I got four. But God said, every time you had one, it's an assignment. Go with this. And I knew I was going to get stuck on, on, on Mary because this thing messed me up reading. I kept studying it. I said, God, how can you, you explain to a man, a woman that's been set aside for you, been guarded, been kept by family, making sure nobody touched her. Amen. And then she comes to the age of you being married to her and she's set aside. She's not out hanging out in the clubs. She ain't not with other women. Amen. Once she's identified as being espoused or engaged, they set her aside to make sure no one can get to her. Jesus. And so Mary's sitting there chilling. She's in prayer or whatever she was doing. The angel visit her and said, you about to bring forth. She said, hold on, dude. I ain't never been touched. <laughs> now, how is this supposed to be? He said, don't fear. The child you're about to be bring forth this holy. He shall he should give this throne, take on the throne of his father David. He's just he's gonna, amen, be a descendant of David. And so this should have excited her, but she's still worried how I take this message to this man. The first indicator is unwanted, and I didn't ask for it. But God gave it to me. Now, how do I take it to this man? So she positions herself for rejection. Because he does not know of this child. 
Y'all didn't see it like that, did you? And so she positions herself for rejection, not knowing what Joseph would say. Amen. Not knowing if she positions herself for rejection, the holy one that she's carrying, if she's carried the same way, she would carry that holy one in rejection. So if you read further, we don't have time for Joseph. Amen. Once he was visited or spoken to, amen, Joseph received her. And so the baby came forth out of a, out of a holy womb. Holy womb. Not a rejected womb. Y'all still with me? So the first word I want you to write a definition for if you're a writer and you take notes is the word mother. We're celebrating Mother's Day. And amen. Uh, the word mother, amen, simply means a female parent. A female parent. That is, amen, in the noun form. Let's see, we, you know, you got nouns, you got adjectives, and we're going to deal with that and teach a little bit today. Amen. In the noun, a female parent. Amen. Amen. Anyone of, of age that's able to uh, conceive, if they're unprotected, they can bring forth a child as a female and be a female parent. But that's not necessarily meaning they qualify for motherhood. Y'all looking at me real funny. A female who has given birth. That's what it says. But it says uh, of relating to the characteristic of a mother. Female parent relating to the characteristic of a mother. So I can say female parent. But what if I say mother? A mother. Amen. Female parent. Mother. What is motherhood? It is, are the qualities or the spirit of a mother. The qualities or spirit of a mother. Here we go. Motherhood. Having or relating to inherent worthiness, justness, or goodness. Motherhood. Having. When I, get, when I bring forth a child, when you bring forth a child unknowingly, you don't have these certain qualities in you. If it's unplanned, if it's a surprise like Mary was surprised, amen, these qualities, amen, you are a female parent, but these qualities must be developed in that mother. Are y'all still with me? To inherit, inherit worthiness, justness, or goodness. It is a favor bestowed upon one. Amen. To bring forth one, to continue a legacy. So every mother, amen, that's upset because I didn't want but one or I didn't want the one that I got. Amen. It is a favorable, a favor bestowed upon you to be able to continue a legacy. I'm going to talk to the brothers a little bit because we have a responsibility. Then it's a, it is something that is obvious. It is something that is obvious when I'm practicing not just mother, not just parent but I'm practicing motherhood. It is something about you that is obvious and it is unarguable. In other words, when you start developing these qualities as a female parent, amen, you are distinct from one that does not develop these qualities. Y'all, mothers, once you bring forth, it's real quiet in the church today. Let me see they're still talking online. You don't become, you're no longer the priority. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. You're no longer the priority. You are still a priority, but you're no longer the priority. Come on. Wherever you are, when you bring forth, you have to find one that can help guide you to those characteristics and those qualities to be developed into mother. Come on. Somebody say it's an assignment. So, 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 so I believe that, 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 that marriage, this is me, marriage just should be a precursor for motherhood, but it don't happen like that. It didn't happen like that for fatherhood for me. But I, I, I believe if, if God was, if, if God was so kind to favor us, he will wait till I'm ready, but he favors us from his, from, from dominion, amen, from eternity into time. God has a plan for our life. So he sets us in a place. So somebody said, what about those women that can't bring forth? There are children born out of, amen, rejected wombs. That God has a God mother who cannot bring forth. And he brings them to in through way by way of adoption or relationship. And they begin to parent someone else that they didn't give birth to. This is good, y'all. I say, teach them, amen, how important this assignment is so that, amen, some of the younger and even some of these older mothers, I see mothers hanging out with their children and clubbing. Right. Jesus. 
And then try to tell him what to do. Jesus. We drinking together. Jesus. Then you trying to correct me. Jesus. All right. Pastor, what you saying? Somebody say it's an assignment. It's an assignment. So, so a parent, right? It's just word, it's assignment to parent. It's a female parent. Somebody say female parent. A parent is an ancestor, amen. One, it, it, our children come through our lineage. We come through somebody else. But then the, the word I use, precursor, amen, something that should happen prior to, amen. Watch this. Then this is, it's, it's a progenitor. Write this word down, P-R-O-G-E-N-I-T-O-R, progenitor. Y'all know I was going to teach today because this is an assignment. Progenitor, progenitor, amen. I say progenitor because, amen, it, it's something that means something to me when I say it. It says, amen, a person or a thing that first indicates direction. This is a person or thing that first indicates direction. So as a parent, I'm the one to give the first direction. As a mother, I'm the first one to give direction. I'm the one that sets the order. Originate something. Progenitor serves as a model. I am the predecessor, the precursor. I'm going to say it again. The person or thing that first indicates a direction. Listen, mothers. Or originates something. In other words, I'm going to give the way to go, the way that I act. Amen. If someone follows, if I, if I practice motherhood the right way, the way that I act sooner or later, the ones that they give mother a uh, parenting to, they're going to start to follow that direction. Gives the first direction. Amen. It is the originator. Sometimes the way I taught my child everything, they went the other way. They didn't follow the pattern. <laughs> the pattern must be set. And some of us, amen, had great mothers, had great parents, but somebody else had to set the pattern for us. Because they didn't learn the pattern. That's why when I see a good woman, a favored woman, everybody say I'm favored. Women say I'm favored. I'm favored. Say it like you mean, say I'm favored. I'm favored. Amen. That day which I don't know, which you don't know, I'm yet learning. I'm favored. Amen. He says that they, are, they serve as a model. You're not old school. Come on, sir. You're not boring. Yeah. You are a model. Come on, God. Model. Yeah. You are a model. Yeah. Amen. Those that are modeling young, watch those that are modeling old. And when you get older, you'll be older. Yeah. You, come on, you have a, you have standards set in place that situations can't change you. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Even, even when a person does not plan a child, Jesus. once that child comes, because yeah. I only plan one of ours. I only plan one of ours with my wife because we already had a daughter, and I loved her, and she was spoiled. I said, man, I want a son. Let's see. And we were exercising and running, and, and she was getting in shape. All of a sudden, she went to the doctor one day, came home, and said, look what you did to me. <laughs> I said, I ain't do it by myself. And I kind of, I kind of planned both of the boys because, because Senator and Kid Wonder wasn't getting along. And he got to a certain size. Everything she did, he would try to fight her. Amen. She'd be sitting on the floor. And he'd be on the couch. He'd run behind her and pull her hair. And then I wonder why he was doing his sister like that. Then I find out she was drinking all the juice out of his bottle. She was aggravating him when we was in the other room. And so he was getting revenge. And so I saw they wasn't getting along. So I said, we need another one. She said, I don't want no more children. <laughs> Two is enough. Then not long after, two years after him, he came. But we learned parenthood. Yeah, Court, Court was that desert storm, baby. Come on. We learned parenthood, amen, by following a model. Y'all follow what I'm saying? The assignment of the parent is to raise a child, watch this, amen, to show them the mother is to give them the qualities, those things that are relating to worthiness, those things that make them worthy of being who they are. Not necessarily, amen, and not necessarily accepted by society, but when they can be, when they can receive it themselves, amen, and know your own worth, amen. Parenthood, parents, mothers have the assignment of teaching not just your daughters, but your sons to know who they are. And there are a lot of people that don't know who they are in themselves, so they can't teach it to their children. That's why I told my wife, I said, you know what, if, if I was, if the way I look at social media, y'all going to, if somebody ain't going to like this, I would just give you so many hours a week, free. 
And then after you reach that time, amen, you have to pay for the rest of the time. You use social media to the, to the end of the next week. Come on, because you use so much now. I guarantee you people being dead, man, I got to pay my Facebook bill. Because they live off social media. They're learning parenthood from social media. How many times you talk to somebody about parenthood and they say, Google say. I remember my son told me, trying to tell my, my, them how to do the kids. Well, we Google it. My wife said, I don't raise all three of y'all. And we ain't know nothing about no Google. So we got these Google babies. Everything is talked through Google instead of through experience. Y'all tell the truth. How I many? We, we do it now. She's breathing funny. Let's Google it. What are the symptoms? I can't breathe good, number one. As I say, oh, give them this. The Google say, so we practicing medicine now. I ain't going to take them to the doctor. Google said, one, two, three, four, five. You got all those. Give them Benadryl. Come on. Baby's still sick. What happens, what happens when I give them Benadryl don't work? They don't want to follow a model. When you get one that practices that comes to becomes a parent, a mother first, and they learn to come into motherhood. The motherhood is the assignment. Once I practice the assignment, there's a favor that comes upon your life. Amen. Stuff will run into you that you're looking for to run into you when you can't find it. You are accident waiting to happen when you practice the assignment. I learned how to be a father on accident. I made a lot of mistakes. Man, I had to apologize to my kids about a lot of stuff. Come on, boys. I used to put it on them joke. When they were growing up, they'd say, do this. Oh, okay, we finna fight. That one right there, I ain't taking them a whoop. I said, well, what you want to do? He did like this. I said, okay. Boom. We started fighting. My wife said, what's going on? I closed the door with my foot. I said, we'll be out in a minute. She was so mad at me. Don't you think my baby like that? I said, your baby's trying to be a man. Then I found out that was wrong. Through the assignment. And I went back and apologized about that. Stuff that we learn, some stuff we learn from the wrong model. Go and get your switch. It worked, but we learned that through the wrong model. Y'all want me to tell you, man, let me, let me tell you, you know what we learned whooping our children from? Let me tell you who taught us how to smack our children. The slave master. Why are you reading? I'm just learning, boss. No, go get the whip. They're trying to do something good. So the master said, y'all trying to plot. So they take you and beat you in front of everybody. How many times? Your, okay, parents, y'all know we do this. Do it again or come into the school and get you. Well, you do it, that's where we get you at. That ain't Bible, but the slave master taught us that. My mom be sweeping. You start talking about squat. Whatever's in it. I bought that into parenthood. And guess what we say? It worked for me. But how many know what worked for you had to unlearn? I had to unlearn it. Now, I don't believe in time out. I don't believe it. I believe there's some, some correction need to be made. I don't believe it's time. Time out don't work for some of our children. Because time out, give them time to think of somebody else how to do it better so you can't, they can outsmart you next time. Let me get to parenthood. I got off my subject. We learn all that stuff. So even now, when I have the tendency, I want to pop one of my grandchildren to do something. They look at me funny when I say pop my grandchildren. I pop them. Don't be laughing. <laughs> I get them every time. Ask, ask Trinity. Come on, get her every time. <laughs> Refers to the process. Parenthood. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Parenthood refers to the process of raising children. It is the methods and techniques used to do so. Methods and techniques do, used to do so. When one becomes a mother, they should immediately adjust their life. To practice motherhood. Immediately. Your time to party. Your time to. You have your, some, your special time. But that parenthood. 
is a priority. Her, Mary, we're reading about Mary. When she took the time, 30 years of Jesus' life, to raise him the way she was instructed by Holy Spirit. She was so into it. Even when they got up and left him in the city, they left him. They was leaving the city. They went back to get Jesus. Jesus said, I'm doing the works of my father. They said, your mother and your, your brother's out there to get you. He said, I'm doing the works of my father that sent me. Joseph was his earthly father, but God gave him to Mary to give him a kingdom assignment. And once she understood the assignment, she was able to be not, not one that interfered with it, but still be able to support it. Let me show you something. Mothers, the first thing a mother does, amen, she places the priority, amen, to become to over herself and goes into motherhood. Y'all with me? Mothers are chosen by God. That's a good note. Y'all need to get that. Motherhood is about fulfilling legacy. So when I say Happy Mother's Day, I think of my good mother who practiced motherhood and her methods were learned wrong, but she taught us something. He gave us a foundation. The last thing I'm going to say about mothers, they always put the, the need of their child before their own. They're willing to sacrifice something that they want so that that child can live properly. It's too simple. Go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings, the third chapter. 1 Kings, the third chapter, talks about two women. Two mothers living in the same house. Each of them had an infant son. Y'all with me? I'm going to let y'all read this. Go to 1 Kings, third chapter. This is why I, read, this is why I want for selfish uh, women that give birth. I said, I ain't asking for no child. It's your child now. They want to drop them off on grandmom and come back three days later. <laughs> Boy, I ain't gonna get too many amens in this message, boy. Yeah. There, there, there are mothers that want their children that can't get their children. Come on now. Because of the mistakes they made in time past. Come on, sir. Come on. Unfortunate situations. But there are some that have access to theirs. And they put their own needs before the child. Come on. There are some that don't want them, don't take care of them, but they keep popping them out. I ain't going to get into all that. We might lose some people offline. <laughs> Come on. You know, I don't care how many daddies it is, you're still the mother. At the end of the day, you are the source. Amen. You, I thank God for my mother. I mean, I mean my, my mom and dad used to do crazy stuff, but my mother was about five, seven. And things still don't go the way that they want. God has a reason for every interjection, every amen, every stop, every pause in your life of motherhood. God has a reason for it. So, the women in the first Kings, y'all know the story. The Bible calls them in the King James Version, I mean New Living Translation, they call them prostitutes. It says, sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Here's the Bible. First Kings, the third chapter, verse number 17. They say, please, my Lord. One of them began. This woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. So this woman rolled over on her baby. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. Come on, you don't kill your baby. Now you won't take somebody else. In other words, you had an opportunity to parent yours, but you didn't master it. You didn't, you didn't take attention to it. Watch this. And in the morning, when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. When I, when I looked more closely in the morning light... I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It's clearly, it clearly was your son. And the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine. And the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Bring you, bring of the, both of you claim the living child is yours. Each one says the dead one belongs to another. The other. All right, bring my sword. So the sword was brought to the king. 
Then he said, cut the living child into two and give one half to the one woman and the other half to the other. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him, loved him and loved him very much cried out. Oh, no, my Lord, give her the child. Please don't kill him. But the woman said, the other woman said, all right. He never, he, he was never yours. He will never, he, 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 all right. He will neither be yours nor mine. Divide him between us. The woman who didn't give birth to the child didn't care what happened to her. You know, he won't be yours or mine. Cut him in half. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live. Y'all see that? He said, give him to the woman who wants him to live. I'm going to say that again. Give him to the woman who wants him to live. Amen. In other words, she was willing to give up her right. You hear what I'm saying? He was willing, she was willing to give her, her, her right, her ownership, just so that the child can live. In other words, she was willing to give all that she had for the welfare of the child. And this was the proof that she was the real mother. Not just a parent. She was the real mother. The baby's not that old. But instantly, when that baby was born, she positioned herself to parents to have to practice motherhood. Now, I don't know who this is for today. But from, me, from 1 Kings, it tells me you do what you need to do so that that child can live. The people were in awe of the king. They saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. The king already knew the real mother going to step up and do what's best for the child. Now imagine these two women selling themselves. Trying to convince that I'm the mother. Now this woman could have been a bitter mother. And she wouldn't even argue about it at all. The love that she had for this child. Calls up and said, don't kill my child. Give him to her. Come on. Moses' mother didn't want him killed. Put him in the river. With alligators and all this. He's not going to die at my hand. Amen. The, the, the king's daughter found him. Moses, Moses, ended up nursing, Moses' mother ended up nursing her own child. Because she was willing to give what was best for the child. Anytime you fulfill, y'all hear me, mothers? Amen. I'm sorry I didn't talk to y'all today, brothers. Anytime you fulfill that assignment of motherhood, favor always come back to you. Now, now you, can't, you can't do nothing about what you did yesterday, last week, last month. But now that you know this, and there's so many other examples in the Bible. Everything come back to you when you fulfill the assignment. I can go so many other places with this. And I look at people that I know that want to be in their children's life. They made mistakes and now they're missing. Oh, their child was taken from them way too soon. But they still practice motherhood in somebody else's child life. Once you learn the assignment of motherhood, it is an assignment that you can't even shake. Come on. Your child might reject you. You'll parent somebody else. You'll be a mother to somebody else's child. Come on. One of yours to get it right. You do it to somebody else. And you say, whatever I'm doing for this one, God, let somebody do it for mine. I know my mom was praying that for me sometimes because I was, I was crazy at times. But I know she was praying. She was taking care of one of my friends. She would do anything for anybody. She was just a mother. So I got it together. And as I began to learn that there's an assignment with everything on our life, somebody say, I understand the assignment. When I first heard that song, I understood the assignment. I was just rapping and singing the song. I understood the assignment. But when I understand the assignment, it's a process. It is something that is given to you by God. It's an assignment. Let's look at this word. My final word. I'm going to talk, talk about this assignment because when we talk about this, it is something that is given to us. Assignment. It's a position of responsibility. It is a position of responsibility. It is a post, a post of duty. In a sign place, it is in a sign place. It is a post of duty. When I hear the word post, I think about military stuff. 
three, uh, three general orders. I regard everything within the limits of my post and quit my post only when properly relieved. I have the assignment as a father. Amen. I have the post of duty as a father. Amen. I regard everything within the limits of my post and quit my post only when properly relieved. When God take it out of my hand, that's the only time I relieve from the assignment. As a mother, amen, you have the assignment of motherhood. No matter what it takes. You ever notice when you see animals, amen, that that mother, she will fight things twice, three times their size. Amen. I think there's something in a woman. You mess with my child, we're going we gonna to have to get it. We're going to have to get it. Come on. In, 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 a, in, a, in a, uh, a pack of lions, I mean, not a pack of lions, but uh, uh, when a bunch of lions are together, amen, the men, the men are the ones that, watch this, this is, what, this is what I think most people mess up at, amen, the women do most of the hunting with lions. They do. And the men stay back and guard the kids. They do, but watch this, but when they're leading it in, the, in a group together, amen, anything comes against that pack or that, that group of lions, that male lion's going to attack anything that comes against it. But just in case he don't move, that lioness, she's like, oh, I'm going to give you a chance. There's nothing like finding a real mother, one that practices motherhood. I don't take away from young girls or young women who become a mother through, through birthing a child, but I think they should go through the process of being developed. They should choose someone in their life because once the child comes, you can't put them back. You have the assignment. Amen. And it, it saddens me when I see so many people abandon their assignment. I've seen men do it all the time, abandon their assignment. And that child grow up being parented by someone else and becomes great. And then their parent try to come, that, that formal, the biological try to come back in their life and claim something for what somebody else took the time to do. Somebody said, that ain't right. That ain't right. So the assignment, somebody says it's an assignment. It's an I'm assignment. All, it is, it is a responsibility. Amen. Once this is on my life, it is something that has been appointed to me by God. When I fulfill the assignment, don't, don't forget this. When I fulfill the assignment, it brings favor. 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 If you're taking notes, here's favor. Excessive kindness. It's a God-given assignment, and it brings me excessive kindness. Watch this. Watch this. Unfair partiality. Man, I'm about to shout now. Unfair partiality. God, the favor on your life, woman of God, mother. Amen. When you're practicing motherhood, you have unfair partiality. Because I'm trying to fulfill this assignment. If you try to fulfill this assignment, God will put you in places, amen, that you don't even qualify for. He'll shift your life. He'll shift things in your life so you can be at the right place at the right time doing what you need to do to fulfill your assignment. Come on here. Unfair partiality. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all still with me? I got a couple more. It's preferential treatment. I prefer you, God says. I prefer you. Amen. I know she bought the kid this, she bought the kid that, but she didn't practice motherhood. She just about to give the child. She gave the child everything they need, but they didn't give any any discipline, any correction. And so God say, I give you preferential treatment. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. I know I know some mothers whose children don't honor them, but other children will come in that person's life and honor them. And make their kids mad. Jesus. Come on. Y'all still with me? Thank you, Lord. I'm almost finished. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I like preferential treatment. I like Unfair partiality. Unfair partiality. Yes, Lord. Excessive kindness. Come on, man. Excessive kindness. So it's the favor that comes with fulfilling the assignment. Thank you, Jesus. I'm almost done. I just want to walk a little bit, y'all. It means to be treated with favor that others are normally neglected from. 
There's a favor when others are neglected. You treat it with favor where others are neglected. Then it says, amen, when God shows you favor, he treats you in a different place with a different type of irreverence than others that don't practice the assignment. Well, the Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. It takes the unjust longer to get it, though. I got a new car, too. You got yours in 15 years, and I got mine in three years. So what you're waiting to get, I got like six or seven things God did for me, and you just got your one thing done. You need, God, you need God to do something big in your life. Amen. Position yourself for preferential treatment. Come on now. Excessive kindness. Exactly. Every assignment on your life. Come on. Make it a priority. <laughs> now, before I close, I got to talk to my young daughters that are not mothers or parents just yet. Don't be in a hurry. Come on. Study. The one to be what a godly woman should be. Not where one is accepted in society all the time. Not one that's, amen, that everybody likes. When you're a godly woman, everybody ain't going to like you. Some of you, some of you, amen, that's practicing even now. And, and I look at, we got a couple of young ladies in here now got supernatural favor on their life. They got excessive kindness, unfair partiality. Amen. It's because of the lineage that you're in. Even though you may not acknowledge that it's coming through your mother. Man, I just, I just went over there for this job, and man, God bless, amen, that unfair partiality that came to that godly mother. Y'all still with me? I'm almost here. Amen. To treat someone with a special treatment, with a favor, and others neglect. It is a gift bestowed upon us. It's when God has, amen, um, amen, appointed you at a point, amen, where you can no longer hide who you are. When others, when others can't see it. When those closest to you can't see it, mother. Someone from the outside will watch that glow on you. Or take note of that. The best part about it, in our closing, when that woman continues to feel free of that assignment, everything that's connected to her eventually comes online. Y'all hear what I said? Everything that is connected to him to her will eventually come online. It is the promises of God, the promises of God being fulfilled in your life. So don't get discouraged because it ain't going the way you think it should go just yet. Stay in the assignment. There is a favor that comes with the assignment of motherhood. But Pastor, I don't feel favor right now. Stay in the assignment. Come on. You can't, you can't parent someone else's, your child right now, parent someone else's. Parent someone else's. Don't become bitter. Become better. Understand the assignment. We're standing. I'm done, y'all. I just wanted to talk to you today. Amen. We'll, we'll shout next week. Amen. I, I so believe that God is setting the people up for success. Because so much that we learn we learn we learn watch this don't miss what I'm going to say most of the time we learn stuff that is attractive to us or exciting to us we learn it easy but the things that challenge us we don't learn it so fast we reject it for a season and then you can go to some of the women even in this church that you admire but there were times they, they rejected the assignment. They wanted to do something else. You know. But once that child comes, once that assignment is on your life, I want to encourage every mother. Start practicing motherhood. Learn it. God, what am I supposed to be doing now? Where am I at now? My child is grown. I still I, I moved from being a daddy to dad to pops. I'm a mentor to my kids now. But I'm still their father. I don't try to daddy them or all that. I don't know. I'm still their mentor. I should be the primary mentor in their life. I should be that example, that model. My wife should be that. I tell my sons, amen, that one that's married and one that's getting ready to get married. This is how you treat. I don't know how your mom go through so much. We do it because I understand the assignment. I don't agree. We don't agree on everything. 
But I don't have to get into an argument with her because we don't, because I get louder and she got quiet. That don't mean I won the argument. Y'all understand what, what we hear? There's a favor that comes with it. And so, God, we just want to just cover our mothers today and the fathers that stand alongside them, uh, those, those that are learning parenthood together. Understand that their mother has a delicate assignment. And we believe, God, today that we're going to grow together in every area. Glory to God. I wanted to talk about those people that co-parent and, and, and didn't want to go too deep into that. But there's an assignment together. That man might be learning that mother might have that child. But that man has an assignment to undergird that wife and to lead that, that woman, whether it's his wife or not, so that he can feel that, fulfill that assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, that's too much. You're requiring too much. No. What's important? What's really important in life? The older I get, the older I get, the, 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 less, the less impressed I become with things. And I understand that family and legacy, all these things are important. Catch what I'm saying? Because some people never get to this age of experience some of the stuff that we've experienced in life. The older I get, not necessarily by age, but the more I learn, the less other stuff become important. So, in our closing, we're praying over parenthood and motherhood. Glory to God, because if there is a mother, there's still, she still had to fulfill parenthood. Parenthood goes on both parents. Married or not, it's an assignment. I'm going to do a family conference, y'all. We're going to talk about some things. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you. For the word you've allowed us to release in this place. Father, we know that as we speak, we speak corporately, God, but we receive individually. Now we pray that every word that was released, God, has found good ground. God, that it is producing fruit even as we stand. God, the word tells us that every man examine himself. So we don't look to our spouses or our significant others. God, we look at ourselves. We know our shortcomings. We know our pitfalls, God. We know our own selfish desires. We ask you to mature us, God. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us where we've been torn, God. Help us to, God, unlearn bad behavior. And God, give us the willingness, God, the, the tenacity to stick close to those things that will cause us to grow. God, we pray for discipline self-discipline God we pray for maturity even now God God let us not just be those that talk about it that know what to do and not do it for if we are hearers of the word only we deceive ourselves help us to be doers of the things that we learn God God help us to be willing students of maturity God in the name of Jesus and say that we bind you now we come against every foul spirit, every interception. The enemy is even trying to intercept, even as we pray. And he's in a, he got people thinking, even online. Hey Amen. He could have he said something different right there. No, the word you heard was the word for you. Make the correction now. The Bible talks about God gave them space to repent, and they would not. God said, make the adjustment now. Anything and everything you need to do to fix where you are. Amen. One that has parent, whether it's your own children or some help in some kind of way with others. Amen. You have those moments where you just don't understand that when you do what you do and why you do it, it don't, as he said, it don't see. He said, but then God will turn around and just favor you anyway. He'll go beyond what you expected. Glory to God to show you that I, I had already, amen, assigned this to your life. And because you did not abort the assignment, because you did not quit in the assignment or on the assignment, glory to God. How many times have we thought we was just done? 
Glory to God. And so God said, because, amen, of all of those times that you cried when it seemed like nobody else heard you crying or care about you crying or hurting or whatever, he said, I just wanted you to know when I gave you the assignment, favor came with it because you accepted it. I mean, when he said that part about, amen, uh, it was when Joseph, amen, explained that he accepted the assignment along with Mary. It shifted her whole womb because sometimes spiritually we can carry children in our womb in a rejected womb because we can say I didn't want no more children and that automatically shifts the environment in our womb and when we got knowledge of this in our relationship with God like I said, before, over, over to Corey, I mean, I just told God, I said, God, if I see the any seed of rejection in his life, please forgive me. Because we are a speaking spirit and we just think, I just said that because that's how I felt at that time. But I don't want to give access to the enemy. That's how you know that you're in relationship with a true and living God. That that same blood that he shed on Calvary still works when you apply it to the knowledge and the wisdom that you're getting now in the truth of his word. You don't benefit from it just knowing it, but when you start applying it, we become some powerful people. And even today, I feel like some of us as mothers and those that have served in a capacity as a mother in somebody's life, you understand favor comes with that. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise for our messenger on today. I thank God for not a traditional message, a religious message, I know we didn't jump, shout, turn flips, and oh, I'm this much. No, 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 no. We need to understand why some of our journeys and processes have been the way that they have been. But to know today that it didn't come without reward, it didn't come without promise, oh, honey, that gives me more of a motivation to keep on pushing. So I bless God for all of you again on today. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Just for our visitors, those that have tuned in, those that will tune in.